conservative movement. Joining me now live to discuss this and other issues, including the citizenship fiasco, is the former Defence Minister and Liberal MP, Kevin Andrews. Good morning. Good morning, Sam. If I could start with the citizenship debacle, is the time now for an audit of all MPs? Two points, Sam. First, this is going to continue to fester politically unless it's resolved, which leads to my second point, and that is that Australians are looking for strong and decisive leadership. If I was the Prime Minister, I would be ordering, uh, requesting uh, the AEC, for example, to immediately undertake an examination of every MP and senator and to report as soon as possible back to the government. If we don't do that, this is just going to continue to fester along and cause problems politically. But as a matter of principle, if we want to stop the further erosion of confidence in probably our most significant institution, namely the parliament, then we have to address the issue. Kevin Andrews, you are the most senior Liberal MP to date to call for a national audit of MPs. Does it surprise you that your former cabinet colleagues haven't done so to date? Look, I can't speak for my colleagues, but what I can do is reflect the views of thousands of ordinary Australians who are sick of all this mess. They want it resolved. Uh, the High Court's made the position quite clear. Now we should follow through on that. It's not a matter of what the law means now, it's a matter of have we complied with the law. And being members of parliament, then there is a special responsibility in that regard. Uh, I think we should just resolve this issue by showing some leadership, having an audit, and that will determine the situation. I've spoken uh, to senior government sources, um, including ministers in recent weeks, who have said the reason why they can't hold an audit is that it is quite possible that it would see the government fall and spark a snap election. Is it worth taking that risk? Well, we heard, you know, similar sort of sentiments, not about the government falling, but similar sentiments from the Labor Party, from Senator Wong this morning. Uh, the Labor Party don't want to have an audit either. Uh, the reality is, though, that this is not going to go away. There will be people investigating various members of parliament and senators to see if their legitimacy constitutionally is valid. Uh, this is not going to go away. If just from a very pragmatic political response, we need to deal with it. But I think beyond that, uh, primarily, there is a policy reason and a principled reason to get this right. The High Court's made the position clear and we should ensure that the Parliament complies with what the Constitution provides. You said that strong leadership was required. Do you think that Malcolm Turnbull is failing a leadership test by failing to ensure the integrity of Parliament? What I'm simply reflecting is what hundreds if not thousands of Australians have said to me over the past weeks and months. What they want to see is some clear, strong and decisive leadership. Uh, this is an area in which I think we can provide it quite clearly because there is a pathway to resolving this issue. And that pathway would be to ask, for example, the Australian Electoral Commission to run the, uh, a fine line, if you like, over all MPs and senators, report back to the government, to the parliament in effect, uh, as to what the situation is. And then we can get on with what we're elected to do, and that is provide for you know, the cost of living, the standard living pressures for ordinary Australians, which they're facing at the present time. But whilst this issue hangs around, it's going to uh, distract all of us, including the government, from what it really should be doing. So, a circuit breaker, have you spoken to your friend and colleague Tony Abbott about whether he supports a national audit of all MPs? Uh, no, I, I haven't, Sam. Uh, I understand Tony's in America, or has been in America, delivering a speech there that I read about in the media. But no, I haven't spoken to Tony about this. I'm reflecting the views that I've formed based on the conversations that I've had with many Australians. OK, what about these extraordinary claims that have surfaced in relation to Christopher Pine, allegations of treachery, uh, Peter Credlin and Corey Bernardi uh, suggesting that he has been a cancer on the Liberal Party. What's your view of Christopher Pine and these claims that he has colluded with GetUp uh, or indeed uh, encouraged others to run against pre-selected Liberal candidates? Look, I have no information about the validity of the claims. Can I answer the question in a broader way? And that is that if we engage in 
uh, internal factional disputes within the Liberal Party, then we're concentrating on ourselves and not what the Australian people want us to concentrate on. And that is things like the cost of living pressures at the present time. Uh, John Howard always spoke about the Liberal Party being a broad church. In other words, it represented the social conservative tradition of Edmund Burke and the likes, but it also represented uh, particularly the economic liberal tradition of Adam Smith and the likes. And when we reflect that balance, as we did in the Howard government, then we had the support of a great many Australians, and indeed that was shown through the longevity of that government. What we need to do what I believe we should be doing is reflecting that broad church balance again in terms of the Liberal Party and on that spectrum there is a place for everybody. What about Tony Abbott's speech overnight suggesting there could be this new conservative movement in Australia? Well what we've seen through the No campaign in particular is that tens of thousands of ordinary Australians have been motivated to get out and campaign uh, against the same-sex marriage proposal. Now, if that vote, uh, the no vote, uh, and we'll know in a week's time, uh, ends up being, you know, 40 per cent or more, that in fact would reflect a greater vote than our primary vote uh, as an opposition at the present time. So that certainly has to be taken into account. We've seen the rise of One Nation, we've seen the rise of uh, Senator Bernardi's Australian Conservatives and other minor forces in Australia. Political parties are not immutable. They have to reflect the broad cross-section of people who support them. And as I said before, that broad church that the Liberal Party has always won support from includes the spectrum of people who are social conservatives and also the people who are economic liberals and the fusion of those two things has has been the most successful combination for us politically but only so because it reflects the broad view of a great many Australians. Okay just finally before we go given the great merry-go-round of, of leadership knifings in Australian politics uh, over many years really uh, going right back to the Gillard Rudd years do you think it would be a mistake to knife Malcolm Turnbull before the next election? Look, what we require is strong, decisive, stable leadership. That's what's required. That's what the Australian people are calling out for. And I think the last decade of this merry-go-round has been destructive. I had always thought that when Labor did it, that we in the Liberal Party and the Coalition wouldn't do it. Sadly, we have done that and we're in the situation that we are at the present time. But what the country requires, what ordinary Australians are asking for, is strong, decisive and stable leadership. And however we do it, we've got to find a way back to that. Including if it involves actually uh, asking Malcolm Turnbull to stand aside so Tony Abbott can return to the top job, for example? Well, I've just said to you, Sam, that we shouldn't be concentrating uh, on the internal events, uh, affairs uh, of the Liberal Party or the Coalition, so I'm not going to engage in that now. Uh, I will proclaim what I believe we should be doing. I will proclaim uh, the way in which I think Australia should be going forward, and I'll leave it to commentators like you and others uh, to do your job, and that's to commentate. Okay, Kevin Andrews, thank you very much for your time today. My pleasure.